Hello, Internet, and welcome back to Master Duel. I am the Dark Duelist, and today I'm going to be getting into the actual lore-based portion of the solo mode, starting off with Monarchs. So let's get this little scenario and learn some Monarch lore. Yay! Let's see what we got here. Right. In this world, some beings embodied the concept of destruction. Their dignified appearance and behavior were like those of monarchs. No one knew for what purpose the monarchs sought the destruction of the world. They wield their paranormal powers and reduce everything in their sight to nothingness. Thunder booms before them and trees turn brittle. They boil the mountains and crack the earth. They conjure storms and submerge all into unfathomable darkness. The world steeped in turmoil and rage, subsumed by violence. And when there is nothing more to destroy, they move to the next land, searching for further destruction. All that witnessed the great destruction shudder in fear. It is the fate of any unfortunate enough to be in their path to disappear in an instant. And, among the destroyers of this world, there is an Alpha. Its overwhelming power of intimidation lays other destroyers prone, and it possesses untold strength. Erebus, the Underworld Monarch. Erebus, the Underworld Monarch sits on his throne in the darkest of darkness, looking on at the destruction of the world as if it were the most natural thing. Oh boy, that's a good little bit of lore there. <laughs> uh, so now, on to the practice to kind of learn how monarchs work. Which, luckily, this is one of the few decks other than heroes I kind of know. Ooh, that's a really cool-looking background. Oh boy, Mobius, so they're gonna give me one of the squires and have the opponent just set three back row? And by one of the squires, I mean they're gonna give me... it's... what is it? Idea? Yeah! I remembered the name of it. Alright. Time for the tutorial to go painfully slow. Come on, let me, let me summon it. Yes, I'll use its effect. Bring out this one. Get an extra normal summon. Yes, yes, tribute summon Mobius. Alright. I guess this kind of explains why they didn't do uh, a tutorial in the dual strategy for tribute summoning. They had this planned. Would be nice if they had a fusion based deck as like the second one, but I think the second one was like the Elemental Lords, which is very not fusion. Why didn't they just have the AI set like three copies of Mirror Force so that I wouldn't have to sit through it chaining all of them? Like, that's just rude. Is it, like, that's just... It's rude. It's, I don't know. That kind of makes me mad. Because Mirror Force would have done the same thing of it would have stopped me from being able to get game that turn. Right? I'm not, I'm not crazy there. Okay, duel. Uh, I'm going to come back later and do the my deck duels. I figure I'm going to play through basically the whole, or at least a good portion of the uh, the solo mode that I'm going to build a hero deck and come back and hit these losers with heroes. Ooh, this is... Uh, I think the smart play here is to go ahead and load Erebus into the grave? Okay, that's nice. And I think I'm gonna set the escalation 
not set to escalation, but send it to grave with uh, pantheism. Oh, nope, nope, I didn't. I almost said it there. I almost did the dumb thing that I didn't want to do. Alright, so. Ooh, March is nice. I do like March. Let's do one of these. And then. Summon Aether. Uh, chain Link 1. And then Chain Link 2 to Chain Block, I guess? Let's see what even Monarchs it's giving me in the stack. I mean, I already know I'm going to add... Okay, it's got a lot of Monarchs in here. Okay. I think Mega Caius. I, unironically, I really like Mega Caius as a card. I'm stupid. I completely forgot to use the effect of Pantheism in Grave before Tribute Summoning Aether. Because I could have banished this from... Ooh, that's dumb. Uh, are they running three Stormforth in here? Nope. Alright. Two Stormforth and a, uh, and a search spell, I guess. Which I will say, I, I kind of agree with running uh, two copies of each of the search one, of the, the Monarch spells, and then three Tenacity. Uh, only one I like running three of is, uh, Brain's losing the name of it right now. Pantheism. I guess let's do this. Go ahead and get another get idea out to be able to tribute it next turn, and go ahead and do this too. Just banish that. Like I said, I I kind of know how to play this deck, but not well enough to not make mistakes like forgetting to use pantheism before tributing idea. Oh. Are they not going to do anything else? I don't want to use that. Wait, no, I don't want to. I want to summon. No. Two tributes. I want to tribute you and you do this. Uh, chain link one on the add. Chain link two on you. And chain link three. Not that this actually matters as far as the chain links here too much, but by having the, uh, the Aether is chain link two, it, and then the, uh, the idea is chain link three. It uh, means they can't solemn the Aether if those were live. And having the Aether as Chain Link 2 instead of Chain Link 1 means that the opponent couldn't bottomless whatever Monarch I summon from the deck. Again, it doesn't really matter right now because those aren't playable, well, aren't activatable, but it's another one of those situations of it's better to make the air quote, optimal play. <laughs> uh, and let's... I guess get you to hand. And then... Yeah, let's activate this. Banish that. You can do a lot of cards. I like cards. Don't want to activate either of those. Oh my goodness. Zaborg. I don't like Mega Zaborg. Just as a card, I don't like it. Uh, you know what? Yeah, let's actually activate you now. Oh, 
Why? Because I didn't have another model card to discard, that's why. So now... I guess... Do this. Get the extra summon. And then just... I guess tribute both of these? Uh, and then do this. Chain Link 1. And Chain Link 2. What Monarch to add? I will say Return of the Monarchs is just a very good card. It's one of those ones that the longer a Monarch player can keep it alive, the better position they're in. Because it can pretty much be the equivalent of like three or four tribute monsters. And do I want to get some? Why? Why is this in here when the deck has an extra deck? Why is that in here? That card is useless. <laughs> Not gonna lie, I'm kinda mad that that card's in this deck right now. <laughs> uh, let's reveal the Erebus, because that's the most recent card I added back to hand. And I know it's an AI, and it's gonna remember everything, and there's also a dual log, but whatever. Uh, I think... I just go in and win. And this, this is a win, right? It's just extra deck. What the? I'm mad. I'm mad at that extra deck. Why is that extra deck there? Why is it there? I don't like it. I don't like it at all. It makes me upset. But it's also a win. Okay, I was about to wait. Is it going to make me actually do the play it with my deck in order to do this? The yeah, answer is no. Alright. So, I guess... Get the goal. Ooh, more lore. The advances of the monarchs, who embody the very concept of destruction, continue. How many countless worlds must they destroy? Lightning storm, blizzards, lava, and seismic catastrophe. All manners of destruction assail the world. As they advance, the monarchs grow even stronger, perpetually pushing the boundaries of destruction. Their power defiles all matter equally. There is no way to discern whether or not the monarchs are aware of what they destroy. They advance thoroughly expunging all that enters their field of vision, no matter the scenery. However, in a land reduced to rubble, to r from the heavens descended a creator, Aether, the heavenly monarch. A savior descended as if a miracle to a land awaiting its destruction. Whether this creator could be counted as one of the monarchs is unknown. The ground in which the creator has landed slowly begins to revive. A day will surely come when this land, regenerated by the creator, will be destroyed again. Nonetheless, with no reward, Aether, the heavenly monarch, fills this ruined world with the light of Reaper. Well, that's just neat. Oh wow, it's it's saying double summons in there. I am never gonna use that deck. Found a new card pack. Oh. Uh no, I don't think I wanna go to the store, but that's cool. I do like the little hidden card pack. Okay, ooh. Whole bunch of more here. I think I'm just gonna do these in order. I will say this I'm excited about. I heard they did like the whole story of uh, 
of World Legacies is like the bottom one. So I'm excited for that because the World Legacy story is very, very good. It's like probably better than the old Dual Terminal story, which anyone who doesn't know the Dual Terminal story, I'd recommend going and uh, looking that up. Anyway, on to the Elemental Lords. Let's see what they got. Probably a bunch of bullshit. The Warriors of the Six Elemental Lords. The world is comprised of six elements. Earth, water, fire, wind, light, and darkness. The elements were brought to Earth by six elemental lords. The world is at peace as long as the six elements are in equilibrium. However, when the balance is disturbed, the elemental lords appear. When the elemental lords' physical forms have increased in density enough to be seen by humans, disaster occurs. The elemental lords have appeared numerous times, causing natural disasters throughout the world. The ancients built temples to calm these resurrect these reoccurring natural disasters. People prayed continually, but the elemental lords did not possess the capacity to answer those prayers. However, the people desperate the people's desperate prayers would be answered miraculously after hundreds of years. Another power that had nothing to do with the elemental lords may have taken pity on them. The elemental lords chose a handful of humans. They were called the Element Saber. They served the elemental lords and maintained the order of the elements. That's all we get for the first half of the lore drop? Okay. Uh, this is gonna be... I feel like it's gonna be tedious. I remember when the element sabers came out. I remember reading them and going, I don't like these. Granted, they uh, they are a fun option to put as a uh, just like literally any one of the element sabers as a one of in elemental heroes because you can change it to whatever attribute you need in grave to make miracle fusion live for any of the omni heroes. That being said, Elemental Heroes have a lot better of options, so it never really comes up as uh, being worth running. But it is a thing that can be done. As you can tell, I'm probably... As you can probably tell, <laughs> I'm rambling. Because... Tutorials. Ooh, they gave him a cool effect. Alright. I'm guessing it had me send two of the same one just so that I could change the attribute. Alright. You know what? I'm gonna make it divine. That's right. Kill me, summon the monster, and attack it. Yay! I should have attacked their monster with the stronger one. Another one of those, it doesn't actually matter, it's tutorial, but I like to, to be in the habit of it. <laughs> and also, if anyone hasn't already noticed, I have, I'm not sure if it's a bad habit or not, but I have a habit of calling out my own misplays whenever I see them, mostly just to make myself aware of them. All right, I didn't get the field spell. That means I'm immediately sad. Ooh, what do I do? Uh, that searches one. It's in the gate. It's a book of moon. And then that one, I'm just going to ignore uh, until I get the field spell. Because I don't want to discard two cards. Actually, let's see. 
Do I have an earth and and or wind? So I have a wind. I don't have a water or fire, so I can't get the destroy my battle and destroy my card effects. So I don't think that's worth something. Thing yet, because all I've got is a yeah. Um, I think. I don't like it, but I think I... I think I do this. And don't like it at all. Like, for real, don't like it. I'm probably going to be misplaying a lot in this one. So anyone who actually plays Element Sabers, uh, or at least knows how to play this deck, is probably going to be mad at me. Oh no! I guess... Force a discard? If they've already got one in hand, or if they don't, get free information? A. Looks like those three cards are not element savers. Cool. I will take that information. Uh, what do you do? Graveyard out of your hand. Okay. Um, I've got two engraved. What's my extra deck? I think I can make this live. Um, I don't think it's worth making it live this turn. So I'm just gonna swing in. And then this one. And then this. And then, yeah, let's tribute that. See if there's anything worth good. What has good attack? You've got good attack. You would have no effect, but I would be tributing you off on the opponent's turn. Uh, what has an effect? That's a foolish. Uh, that's a special summon. Yeah, I think I do this. Do this. We'll get that out. I can afford to be a little bit more reckless this turn just because, well, my opponent has one monster in hand. They have one of the Dark Element Saber. So its effect's not even live. I do? Oh, that second effect is probably not going to be very good. So let's do this. Get you. Then I should have put that in defense position. I was not paying attention and did not realize its attack was that low. That is my bad. Ooh. Um. Okay, I've only got four I can change the attribute of because the level six I can't change the attribute. But I guess I could. I could use this to get him to the grave and use it, but I don't think that's worth it. I'm just gonna make him light. Boom. And then you destroy the back row, right? Yeah, no, destroy the monsters, not back row. I'm good at remembering cards. Ooh, they drew an element saber. I 
don't think it's worth tripping up the kill up him. But my opponent's in a bad spot. They have one card in hand, and it is very unlikely that that is a monster. Like, very unlikely. So I think this game is pretty much decided. And before the AI has some form of po super powerful, special, awesome chocolate covered sprinkle card. Or an ending of the turn. Ooh. Yeah, I don't feel like going through the effort of changing attributes and making them just card in their hand. I think it's just swing in. If this was on paper, I would totally be like, oh yeah, change attributes, do it because it's faster, but this is digital and against the computer. So time for more lore on the Elemental Lords. Right, let's see what we got. Get my reading voice put on. The Element Saber. Now protect the temple which pilgrims no longer visit. And day by day, they manage the elements that comprise the world to not flare out of control. Let's say, for example, the element of fire flares up. The element saber would change the power of... So it would enhance the power of the water element. It would rain throughout the land, extinguishing the flames. When one element gets out of hand, the forces of the opposite element are increased. Restoring balance. The Element Sabers inherit only a fraction of the Elemental Lord's authority and cannot exercise all their power. Nor should that power make them feel as if they are gods. They use their ability to command, train, and do right. Training never ends for the element sabers. I wonder if they're ever gonna do like five other element sabers for the ones that they didn't do the uh, the upper level for. Probably not. But I think that's gonna be it for this episode. Looks like probably about uh, about two gates per episode is going to be what I'll be able to hit. So I guess next time will be Ruin and Demise and the uh, Mysteries of the Megalith. So thank you all for watching and see ya. <laughs>